Good morning, uh, everybody. Well, welcome to the Daily Energy Markets Forum. Uh, it's uh, Monday morning in the Middle East, uh, uh, evening in Asia, uh, and some of the Americas are just perhaps uh, going to sleep uh, and some of them are waking up. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first week of the first working week of the fourth quarter. I'm delighted to be joined by Andy Laven, CEO of Sahara Energy Resources, Peter Maguire, CEO of XM Australia, and Omar Najia, Global Head of Derivatives at BB Energy. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. Peter, I won't go to you for your OPEC thoughts right now. Let's let's move to, to Asia specific and uh, talk a little bit about China, uh, yeah. which has its own problems to be thinking about these days. I mean, you know, it's, it's a whole list. I don't know where you would start, but, you know, power crisis, uh, coal, you know, coal having to be ramped up again. Um, you know, even it's having even problems with its agricultural production because of power problems. So, you know, how is this yes. all going to impact China's GDP trajectory, uh, which has already been downgraded, obviously, several times this year? Well, I think it's, I, I think straight off, it's got to have an impact. There's no doubting that. And the uncertainty as far as supply chains and supply lines and all of the issues facing from an energy standpoint and agriculture doesn't bode well over a winter period in China. And wrap that up with, of course, the ongoing saga with Evergrande. Uh, it nearly brews to a perfect storm in a lot of ways. So I think that central, centrally, the, the government's going to have their hands full over the next matter of months, increasing, uh, increasing oil prices and, uh, and uh, energy costs are not going to go well right across Asia and certainly facing into China and again over that winter period. So there is no doubt that we're coming out of this COVID demand situation. By the way, we're just starting our fourth month of lockdown in Sydney. And uh, it seems to be that things are ratcheting up very, very quickly globally. So from a demand picture, foods, energy, and you name it, everything seems to be galloping ahead and has been demonstrated with the price of crude, price of nat gas, price of some of the base metals, aluminium, absolutely very strongly bid up. So it's going to be, I think, the rest of the year, no one could forecast. We spoke with Sean going back about six weeks ago and everyone was pretty much saying, well, 60 bucks will be where it's sitting probably by November. And uh, I've just listened to Andy's point. It's very hard to speculate on a forecast moving forward. But if maybe it's going to be higher than what we're thinking, maybe 85, maybe it's got a 90. I don't know. It, I, it's not a good sign if it gets to 100. Inflation's pretty much out of control in a lot of ways. And we're, I think they're in a lot of, a lot of mindsets across global economists, they're thinking, is it a soft stagflation story at the moment? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to get on to and ask, come, come back to you with is that, you know, there has been that word stagflation touted the last couple of weeks. It's, it's as if, oh, surprise, surprise, you know, we've got, yeah. we've got inflation. I mean, I don't, I don't know who, you know, who has got it wrong and why, you know, how did the world get it so wrong? You know, suddenly it's as if everything has caught up with us. Uh, you know, both from the demand point of view and supply. Yeah. <laughs> and, and where would you say was the inflection point where things should have moved more quickly? It's like saying to a drunk um, or a person who's got a drinking problem, uh, if you keep on doing this, you will eventually will have a liver problem. And unfortunately, we've really kicked this can that far down the road with quantitative easing, say, well, call it whatever you want, printing of money in the, in the tens, probably a 10 trillion number across all of the countries over the last two years or year and a half. The judgment day has got to be, when do we start seeing rates uh, creep up as far as taper, as far as growth numbers? You were saying, you know, the Chinese story as far as GDP being pulled back. So these are all concerns on a big global macro theme. I'm just sitting here going, wow, where's the next opportunity? Yeah. So, so I mean, what is what is the U.S. going to do? You know, the U.S. Treasury is going to run out of you know, it's running out of cash unless it keeps you know raising that debt ceiling. I mean, it's it's, it's propelling the same problem yes. forward and forward. Um, we're expecting some tapering in November. That's sort of yes. you know, goes without saying right now. But um, where do you see the interest rate game going? Being led by well, the I'm, I'm, well, I'm curious on two fronts. First off, we've got U.S. dollar index now through about ninety four point two. US dollar, uh, pardon me, the US dollar index has come back a little bit from that 94 and a half that we saw 
going to last Thursday, Friday, it's had a big, strong push up over the last you know, week and a bit. There's the first part. The second part is I want to see what happens in Kiwi land, New Zealand this week, whether they yeah. punch a 25 basis point um, increase. And then what's the general mood across other central bankers as we start to look at pulling taper off the table and do we start to see, you know, the rumblings? Yeah, well, we're going to add X and we're going to do Y. So, yeah, it's going to be a very fascinating lead up to Christmas. But, Peter, just to go to you on that with, with China, um, the Evergrande, the back, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll pass. It's another financial, little financial crisis within the sector, a, a very oh. big sector. But it has, it has uh, depleted investor confidence to an extent, hasn't it? I mean, in terms of the, the legacy effect of that, does it make a difference? I mean, it's, it's passed almost. For such a big economy, uh, uh, China is, as Amar said, you know, these, 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 these incidences are not actually that big uh, on the greater scheme of things. Well, I don't know. I mean, they make, just for a company standpoint, they build 600,000 homes a year. We know they're in electric vehicles. We know that they're a, a, the second largest player in the domestic market. Uh, how much of the economy, and, and it represents, property represents around about 31% of GDP, how much appetite is there out there to, uh, if, if this is a contagion across other developers, being property developers, that is, and uh, that pr whole construction arm, this is why I think we've got to wait and see how it plays out. I, I saw that... Uh, reading only a couple of hours ago, they missed a payment. I believe there was a payment due yesterday, Sunday. Uh, so I just want to see the, the, all the workings, all the ramifications, and then be able to understand, aha, uh -huh, this is what's happening. Maybe it's not going to be a layman. I hope it isn't. Is but there, do, you think, I, do you think there's a struggle within Chinese government with the policy? You know, they've had obviously this policy well, of, uh, you know, their sort of long-term energy transition, you know, clean up the air, uh, policies and there's certain restrictions on, on production and industrial production as a result, which are you know, very strict, being very strictly implemented. And then they have sure. this power crisis today that's threatening to get worse in the winter. Then they have to also ensure and saying they're going to ensure electricity and power to, to their people. Is that a yes. conflict for the government or do you think they'll manage it okay? They seem to be sort of stating both uh, prongs equally. Uh, can that be done? Well, all I know is it gets frightfully cold. I've been to Beijing in January and it's frightfully cold. I've st stood on the Great Wall at minus 12 and you need a lot of natural gas. You need a lot of energy. You need a lot of coal-fired power plants. You need whatever else to generate sufficient power to keep that whole ecosystem called China very much alive during a winter. So if there are supply issues and there are other... Um, dramas across the globe with energy, then this doesn't bode well for Europe over, over winter, doesn't bode well for UK and certainly not into the likes of China. So I sit here looking at it at the big picture and saying, I think volatility is going to be a yeah. the, 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 the key word over the next three to four months as far as trading. And would you agree that we're facing a period of stagflation or just inflation and economic growth? Oh. Oh, we're, we're facing dramatic inflation. And as far what as... What about the growth, economic growth part? Yeah. Yeah, well, this is the problem. You've got soft terminology as far as a stagflationary environment. So we need to see growth numbers coming out of the globe. This is... I mean, we're, we're just coming out of a, a, an 18-month horrific hibernation. And some of us are still right in the hibernation. So being where I live in Sydney. So... We've got to see where the whole world is February, March next year, and everyone take a deep breath and go, aha. Uh -huh. And if we've got energy prices at 95, if we've got major supply issues and uh, all, all sorts of heating concerns and electricity production across the globe, then that doesn't uh, sit well, I think, from any economic standpoint. And how does it affect GDP? Peter, just to go to you, uh, back to you, sort of week ahead outlook, anything we're looking out for, and, and, and I'd like to ask you where your viewpoint on equities is, is, is going. You've been quite bullish, generally speaking, on the direction line, trend line of that. Where do you see yep. 
equity markets going and anything to watch out for this week? Uh, first off, I'm very close eye as far as uh, New Zealand. So that just that's the first cab off the rank. And I just want to see the, the, the tone of the meeting. I just want to see the, the, the general, um, yeah, the, the, the storyline. Uh, as far as equities, eventually there comes a time that markets outgrow themselves and they become exhausted to the upside. And I'm not suggesting we're there yet. We are in October. And uh, October is always a, a, a very volatile month. And I, I'm just looking at the big, the big themes out there and what the storyline is from a trading perspective. I, we've had such a massive run up there's been no, no thoughts as far as correction. There's been nothing really to take the, take the momentum. Have a look at what's happening with the Nikkei. Have a look where the Dow is and, and a number of other the big, big markets, China, so-so, but certainly India. So I think that there does come a time that there's maybe a pullback or maybe a just some of that hot air comes out of the market. And I think that we are probably entering that stage from an inflationary point and from just the general consensus, we haven't put the, as I took on board Andy's point, no, I don't know whether we do come back to a, the, the old way. So at the moment, I'm thinking, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of that hot air come out of the equity markets. And uh, I wouldn't think, be surprised to see it happen this month. And, and do you think that might be influenced by, you know, what happens domestically in the US in terms of the bills that Biden's trying to pass through from an expenditure oh. point, fiscal point of view? Uh, will that no have doubt. a bearing, do you think? Absolutely. You know, the, the, the general um, feeling towards Biden, the, the, the comments, what I see in, as far as the press he had, certainly hasn't made himself any favours or any any friends, and and he's running. Or he's certainly run out of favours. And the story, you know, what's happening as far as we have put Afghanistan behind us. We're conscious as far as inflation. We're conscious as far as where the U.S. economy's earnings season and and what's happening from a domestic standpoint. That that hot air has been blown into the market, and I think it just comes a point in time that some of that through you know the debt ceiling and other large themes are going to take some of that hot air out of the market. Thanks very much, gentlemen, Andy, Omar and Peter for joining us this morning. Uh, have a good Thank Monday you. and I uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.